Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, guys, this is Bruce Marshall from Simpler Trading in the Simpler Essentials room today for a chart setup session. And I am dual broadcasting here in the bias room as well. Hope everybody is having a fantastic day today. Uh, let me double check here, make sure we are all good to go. Can you guys? Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, guys, this is Bruce Marshall in the Simpler Essentials room, my first time in this room in a while. So um, hope everybody's having a great day. Let me double check here. Mercy, good to see you. Scott over Jim, there you are. All right. I thought I had my mic on a minute ago, and I was talking, and no one was responding. So... <laughs> So welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going to do a uh, chart setup session today, and I am dual broadcasting in the bias room. Let me double check over here. Mirza, good to go. Jack, history guy, Andrew, Michael, Doc Rock, Wayne. All right, good to see all, everyone here today. Chickadee, howdy. Mitch, what's going on? Good to see you as well. So again, hope everybody is having a fantastic day uh, trading this whack-a-mole markets a little little uh, wacky um, and what I want to do I want to go through the the style trades that I do are a little bit different probably than most um, I trade more of the income style trades which can be um, you know a lot of butterflies I use a lot of calendars diagonals um, iron condors and stuff like that uh, but my time frames are a little bit longer um, time frame generally speaking so I might use some different charts and my charts also tend to be a little I think cleaner than most um, and I'll show you so let's get started here and first of all I'm gonna put on uh, let's see a basic layout here we'll start with this actually you know what I'm gonna start with a um, kind of a default here and before we even get that far um, I was asked to mention this this is thinkorswim uh, if you're not familiar with thinkorswim great platform I've used it for I don't know 25 years probably something like that uh, here is of course the the site itself uh, TD Ameritrade log into thinkorswim thinkorswim of course is um, I, I mean again I've used thinkorswim probably I think I started using it in I don't know around 2000 or 2002 or something like that anyway long 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 time ago and at the time it was a boutique really boutique platform there was actually not a lot of us on it and um, and it kept getting built up and built up and then you know um, refined and it was ultimately end, ended up being sold and all that kind of stuff uh, to uh, to TD Ameritrade and now um, was also merged with Charles Schwab so anyway uh, if you trade options I think it's one of the best platforms of course you can use any platform out there uh, but this setup is on thinkorswim which we call toss uh, for anyone that doesn't know and again I was asked to kind of go through that what the platform is and all that but I think it's the most robust platform and gives you the most flexibility on charting um, so as you can see this is a basic basic chart and the way that no matter what you trade um, the way that I think to me makes the most sense you can have um, anything you want on these charts so you can have um, simple moving averages you can have all kind of stuff on here uh, Bollinger Bands and you can get this as complicated as you want and you can't see anything because there's so much going on on your chart I don't like that I like it keep it very simple very clean and I do have all the other things out there but I keep them under studies here and so if you go to load study set you can see that I'll have there's a 20 50 day simple moving average SMA I have a 5 and 13 for smaller time frames. I have an 8 and 21. Those are just different time frames. Um, there's an 8 and 34. 
Um, I'll have an earnings layout. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, this one I use probably more than any other one. Um, I'll have a couple of ribbons here, Keltner channels. We're going to go through all this stuff. Voodoo lines, uh, RAF Pro, and then tick chart. You know, so I've got all this stuff, and and you can switch, you know, back and forth to this stuff on the fly. Um, and again, I think that keeps the chart clean, and I can still have access to all the stuff that you want. And there's really no limit that you can, you know, you can save, create a study, and save it. And then if you load it here, you can just kind of toggle back and forth uh, between whatever you're looking for. So again, most people, I think when I show my charts, they, they'll they look at this and go, you know, that's, that looks pretty uh, plain. And that's, that's honestly by design. Um, so as you can see right here, this one is at Simple Moving Averages. You see on the top, this is a the blue, see up here, it's a 20-day simple moving average, the blue line. The uh, yellow, yellow line there is a 50-day moving average, and the red line down here is a 200-day moving average. So what's important about that, if you're new or newer to charting, is when these cross over. You see these points when the moving averages cross over and we're getting another one here and we're we're kind of in decision point right here um, the the 20 is already under that's the 20 it's under the 50 that's good when I mean it's not good unless you're bearish <laughs> so when this crosses over that signals potential you know down move and when it crosses on the upside 20 goes over the 50 you know that is kind of by the dip as it comes back down, right? Um, so again, very, very, I've got a lot of different ones I want to go through, so I'm just going to kind of touch them um, briefly, but that's kind of the thought process there. And I have, you know, I talk about charting with a lot of people, um, and I have said this before when people kind of give me the side eye, but I really think you could trade off moving averages if you had to you know and let me show you what I mean if we go to a ribbon now this is one that JC put together and I just like it it's just easy it's already there I don't have to recreate the wheel reinvent the wheel um, all this other stuff down here that's the squeeze and ready and fire and all that kind of stuff and that's great you can add as much you know as much or as little as you want to on these charts but what I'm looking at more than anything else here this is the ES, and what I'm looking at are these levels from the mean. Now that's that's the mean right there, that white line. And if we go up one to the purple line there, that's plus that's plus one ATR. That is minus one ATR. That's plus two, and that is plus. Three and this is minus two and minus three. This alone will tell you a lot. Whenever you get far away from the center right here, um, you will inevitably come back to the center. So you come up here to plus three, you're going to come back down and you can see we did right there. And then we came down and touched negative three. So we're up here plus three and now we're down here at negative three and guess what we're going to come back to the center and we didn't get quite up here you don't have to go up to plus two you can go to plus one uh, plus two plus three you know whatever uh, depends on what the market's doing but uh, at some point you'll come back down to the center and then maybe even go lower so um, again if we're just looking at different points in time here um, this alone can tell you a, a a really good bit about what's going on with the market right and I've done this into a simple, there, here's a ribbon here. Um, these are just moving averages. This is a, um, that's an eight, an eight day, um, a 21 day. The blue is a 21, it's hard to see that. Uh, that's a 34 and that's a 50 and that's a 200. So, uh, it's actually 55 and then 200. So again, that's what I was talking about moving averages. You can you could trade off these moving averages, and you can you can do different time frames for 
the type trading you're doing if it is short term or you know maybe longer term a lot of people and a lot of times you'll see traders with a whole lot on their charts are trading much much smaller time frames such as you know intraday scalping futures you know in and out and in and out and in and out and you need a much much taller uh, tighter time frame than this this is a one year chart that I'm looking at right so let's go back to where we started with our simple moving averages and again this is about as simple as it gets that's a 20 50 and a 200 day that's about as simple as it gets but again if you look at this in about you know 0.2 seconds you can tell is that a bullish or a bearish chart and this is bearish you know going down right uh, let's see if I can even I don't even know if I can find a a, uh, a bullish chart right now maybe Google yeah um, because we're you know we're looking at a trend a trend here and you know you tend to bounce and you know maybe that's what happened now we're under these moving averages not good that does open the door for down some more downside but the point is that you can look at this again it's a one-year chart and get a general idea of what's going on with the stock right and if we want to break it down now I told you over here under studies I've got all of these different things that I want to look at separately I don't want all these on top of each other I want it to where I can look at it clearly and over here on my time frame I want to be able to toggle between different time frames very 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 easily so there's a one year one day there's a two year one day that really tells you at a glance what's going on with the market again this is Google I'll just do um, I'll do SPX actually you know what I'll do ES we always look at ES. Uh, the reason I like looking at ES is because you get 24 hour um, data on ES versus the SPX that, you know, starts or stops in the afternoon and starts back in the morning. Uh, this is more of a continuous chart. So again, you can kind of get a good quick, quick glance here. So that's a two year chart. Let's go to a five year chart. And again, this kind of tells you where we've been and where we might be going. You know, we're going up here. This is COVID, big flush down, then rip up higher. And then this trend, obviously, you know, down, down, down. The overall trend here is up, up, up so far. Uh, but inside of this, it's been, there's been many, many, um, you know, whack-a-mole days where we're, you know, we're up. 30 40 and then by the end of the day we're down 30 40 just you know back and forth back and forth back and forth hard to trade right uh, but again that's I like to be able to toggle back and forth on my time frames uh, very quickly if I'm looking at a chart um, say different thought if you wanted to buy I don't know a, a stock let's say I don't know I'm just gonna pick one Costco and you said how is it done you know over the long term okay well here's a 10 year it's a 10 year chart so if you bought Costco 10 years ago you generally have had a really nice move really nice ride a couple little flush downs along the way that's okay um, really nice right versus let's see mm, trying to think <laughs> um, I can't even think of one. Um, I don't know. Restoration hardware. Yeah, there you go. Um, so you bought this 10 years ago and you had a great ride up here. And then for five years, you made a lot of money and then you lost a lot of money. So anyway, you look at this chart for two seconds and you go, long term, is this good? Yeah, mm, maybe. You know, um, again, what I want to do is look at charts in about two seconds and get some information for it and then I come back here and go okay well that's a 10 year chart let's go back here let's look on a one year chart it looks pretty ugly well let's go down even further again this is restoration hour totally just the, off the top of my head example so what's it done in the last 180 days Ooh, looks pretty bad there's an earnings period right there it must have been good from that earnings period you know etc now it's coming down here's another earnings period here and obviously we had a big free fall though that you can look at this chart and go this earnings must have been good this earnings must have been bad right 
And then if we're going to set up a trade, so I'm just looking right now. I'm just being playing detective right now, just trying to find some clues, right? Okay, what's it done in the last 20 days if I'm really going to enter it? Okay, down, 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 down. Here's earnings right here. And you hover over that, and it'll show you the earnings and what they were and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, we can look at this until it's down, 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 down. So at this point, do we want to buy this? Probably not. You know, I mean, there'd be a total counter trend trade. Uh, maybe if it comes back up here or even up here, maybe we want to short it for the next move down. You know, again, I'm just talking general concepts here, right? Um, so let's go. If if we did want to do a trade, and let's say, let's say it did, it had bounced up, and it was back here to that moving average, and we thought this thing is going to continue down. We're going to short it off that level. Okay, so we got an idea. Uh, we know what our level is. Let's go to a, an even shorter time frame. Let's go to a one day chart. So I'm, you know, I'm ready to enter that thing. So I'm looking at what's going on intraday while I'm looking at the, you know, at the chart, etc. Um, so you know that is kind of in a nutshell how I, how I use. And again, we're, we're just doing like simple, simple, simple moving averages here. And then toggling between different dates to get different information about what we want to what to see as far as a time frame. So think about this again. If we're doing a let's do a one year chart and let's go. I don't know. I'm just gonna pick another one. Let's say Lockheed Martin. And let's say we're going to do an iron condor out here. And you know, here's my levels and that kind of stuff. Um, it's good to visualize it, see where it's been, and then again, as we get drilled down into t smaller and smaller time frames to for the actual entry on it. Um, and one other thing to that I will keep on here on a again very very simple 20-day, 50-day, 200-day simple moving average. This has our implied volatility. So what does that tell you? Well, that tells you that and again this is Lockheed Martin that these vols are rising they're coming up so and that makes sense the stock is coming down vols are coming up right so what does that mean well it means that there's an earnings event out here that's normal you're gonna typically you know vols gonna come up into earnings typically so that means that can tell you if you maybe want to sell some premium or maybe buy some premium. So you've got a lot of information here on this chart. Here's a dividend. Here's an earn last earnings or three earnings ago. Dividend, earnings, dividend, earnings, dividend. Um, so again, lots of information here on a very, very, very clean, very, very, very simple chart. Let's go back to our, our um, restoration hardware example. And again, from this, we can see here's our volatility. We rise into earnings and then we have vol crush. We rise into earnings, have vol crush. Rise into earnings, vol crush. Rise into earnings, vol crush. It's like clockwork. That's the EKG of you know earnings. That's the way it works. And again, we're getting a lot of information here on a super, super simple chart. And and we'll use that to say, hey, this is a good idea or not. And, you know, if it's a good idea, then we want, what's the next step? Well, we want to try to figure out what type trade we might want to use. Then we start going into smaller and smaller time frames. And then we start looking at the trade tab to look at our expirations and see how far out we want to go. So all this is small, small little stepping stones, building blocks to come up with an eventual trade, right? Because otherwise you're kind of, you know, you're, you're driving in the dark or whatever. Um, if you don't get some information from the charts ahead of time, right? So real quick, I want to show you, let's go through a couple of these other, other ones real quick. We started with the super basic one. Um, these are just, you know, for different time frames, pretty self-explanatory. Those are 20, 50, 200. These are 513, 821, 834. Um, but I want to jump over here to our grab candles and wave because I use this probably more than any of the other ones for my personal stuff because um, that this kind of fits the time frames that I use more than anything else. And this, let's just put NVIDIA up there. Um, these moving averages are based on 34 
um, 34 EMAs right here, right? So again, you know, from smallest to longer term, I guess, you know, 5, 13, 8, 21, 34, you know, 50, 55, 100, 200. There's a lot of different moving averages you can use. This is, these are based on 34, which work for me um, very well, again, based on the type trades that I use. So, you know, whether it doesn't matter, you know, again, what we're looking at here, <clears throat> I can look at this chart in about two seconds and go, okay, this looks good. And I can see again in two seconds here that we're breaking below that lower 34. Generally not good. When you start breaking below that, you generally are going down. Now this Google, of course, trades on the NASDAQ. So if we are looking at, should we buy some Google? Should we buy some Apple? I mean, look at this. And I'm gonna get to some questions in a minute. Um, we're down below the 34. Not good. Not good. Not good. We want to. We would probably want to short this down. And I hate short Apple, but this is what the chart tells us. Um, until you can break above this, you're generally going to hit this. This will be your ceiling, and it's going to come back. And you're going to hit it and continue down, like we did over here. Down, 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 down. Right. Um, and again, Apple trades on the Nasdaq. So. What does the NASDAQ look like? And I'll just use the NQ here the same way. You know, this is the NASDAQ and we're breaking down below at 34. Not, a, not in a good place. That's, that's a position of weakness, not strength, right? So if the NASDAQ, the reason that this is important, this breaks down, it's going to drag Apple down. It's going to drag Amazon. It's going to drag Google, Netflix, Tesla, all of those stocks that trade on NASDAQ is going to drag them down. Um, so there are two things you should look at whenever you're considering, you know, uh, you know, a long or a short, you know, what index does it trade on and is that index looking strong or weak? Because uh, you'll get some tailwind there or some, you know, some uh, headwind, one or the other. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, real quick, let me continue to go through these real quick and then I'll jump over the questions. So I'm going to show you the main ones that I use. That one is super simplistic. This one, this is the grab candles and wave. These these yellow lines and the purple lines are called Darvis boxes. Um, again, this is a great indicator. Ragi puts this one together. This is a free indicator. If you don't have it, you should you should definitely get it or de definitely check it out. It's a lot of information on here. Um, I don't have enough time to go into all this, but we've got propulsion dots and, and all the stuff in here. Generally, what I'm looking at are these Darvis box levels and are we above or below these 34 EMAs? Again, I like to keep it simple. You know, is this, does this look, are you coming from a place of strength or a place of weakness here? And right now, again, this is ES, we're below 34, we're breaking below that Darvis box. This looks, you know, this looks weak. Um, so again, I want something I can look at very, very quickly to get a first impression then we go into smaller time frames and all that. And so where I go from here, because this is 34 EMA, um, I want to go to something a smaller time frame to give me a little more accuracy. And that is the voodoo lines. And you guys have probably seen the voodoo lines. I'm going to go to these. There's different ones. There's standards, alternate. I'm going to go to these alternate ones because they go these. I'm looking at smaller time frames. So if we're looking at the ES, for example, um, and I go to a, let's say, a 20-day chart. Um, these lines are going to, we're, we're on a smaller time frame now, and these lines are, are telling me a lot here. The red line is the strongest line. You can see we hit, you know, again, the 20-day chart. Um, yes, we did break through it a little bit here, a little bit here, handily there, um, but ultimately we didn't get above it we started coming back down the green lines are the second strongest those are tree lines and then the white lines are snow lines and then I've got some blue lines which are sky lines uh, but again these are levels that you typically would um, stop or at least pause here we paused bounce and fell through it so you know when I'm looking at this if I'm actually ready to make a trade again I'm looking this is a 20 day chart Let's go down to a one day chart. Okay, I'm ready to enter the trade here, right? Well, where would I enter? Well, this so far today has held, and again, this I'm generically speaking here. 
um, for a bounce up here. And I'm looking at where these levels are above and below us. And then I take this. So this is a one day, one minute chart. And I will take this and then I will go over to my, hold on a second. I've actually got another one that is, I, I took a screenshot this morning here. Um, now this is a different, this is off Dynamic Trader. So I will use, um, we all use, I think everyone uses Fibonacci levels, right? And you can run Fibonacci levels off TOSS. Uh, these are off Dynamic Trader, which is a different platform. Uh, you have to have a data feed subscription for it. It's not cheap. Um, but you can do this on TOSS, right? And so this morning, um, let's see, this was a, I think this was a 30 minute chart. No, it might've been a 120, it was a 120 minute chart. Um, anyway, as I get down, I'm drilling down deeper and deeper, I guess that was back here, deeper and deeper in where these things might, where I might want to enter or exit a trade, you know, for a bounce or scalp or something like that. So I'm looking at a 120 minute on for fib levels. I'm looking at a 30 minute. I'm looking at a 10 minute, you know, that type thing. And I'm just, all I'm doing is looking, I'm playing detective and looking for more clues, drilling down into tighter and tighter and tighter time frames. And uh, again, I will come over here to our, you know, our ribbon or Keltner channels. And I'm looking, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking and looking to, again, try to find strength or weakness in any of these charts. And again, I'm, I'm kind of toggling between, um, between time frames because it matters a lot if your trade is a day trade for that day or is it for this Friday or next Friday or the Friday after, you know, two, three weeks out. Is it 30 days out? Is it 45 days out? Um, in the bias room, we've got some trades on that expire the end of the year on 29 December. That's a long way out, right? Um, so does it really help to do the, you know, a tiny, tiny time frame chart to do a trade that's four months out? No, not really. You need a, you need a longer time frame like this. Um, so anyway, those are you know, the highlights of what I've got here. Again, um, a lot of people will have, um, will have these on, you know, a lot of these indicators will be on the same charts. Um, I, again, I like to keep them separate. Um, you guys have probably seen like uh, REF Pro, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's different ones. I don't use these as much as the ones that I showed you guys. I use this one, Simple Moving Average. I'll use this Grab Candles a lot. Um, I'll use a ribbon where it's whether it's a time frame or a Keltner channel. Um, and then I'll use Voodoo Lines. And then the last step, of course, is Fib Levels. And again, you could come in here and draw your own fib levels um, on toss. Uh, there, you know, there are other platforms. Um, I'm trying I'm at a loss right now. I'm trying to think of other ones that do, but um, there, there are quite a few other ones that do. Again, I use Dynamic Trader um, for mine, but that again is unless you're really doing a whole lot of in-depth Fibonacci work, probably is not the best for uh, I would say a retail trader probably um, but anyway again you can get the same thing from here all, all this stuff so all the indicators that I have everything I have here is free except the voodoo lines all this stuff is you know is uh, stuff that you can either you know have or create here and you probably know this if you're going to edit you know um, if you have a chart and you're going to add something you know, type in whatever here you want to add and move it over and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I was trying to keep this, I'm just about out of time, but I wanted to keep this short and sweet and just hit the high points of my, you know, simplistic charts starting from the, you know, the 10,000 foot view all the way down into the microscopic, you know, one minute view. Uh, when I'm really, really, really ready to enter or exit a trade, if I'm trying to figure out, you know, <clears throat> if we're going to get in or out or, or get filled on something and I'm, and I'm going to much, much smaller time frames, right? Um, so with that, let me jump back over here and see if you guys have questions. 
Uh, let's see, Brian, I don't have an update on that NVIDIA for you at the time. I'm still looking at it. Um, there's nothing to do on it uh, at, the, at the moment. Uh, Mitch, yes. <laughs> Let's see. Um, all right. Dr. Bob, how's it going? Um, Mike, uh, let's see. So, Mike, on what I'm talking about here on this, uh, again, you know, I'm just trying to point out um, really how to keep it how to keep it simple. And again, we can customize any of these. This is on toss, right? And we can customize any of this stuff to add whatever we want to on it, which is really cool. Very good functionality here, right? Um, and of course, on toss here are all the studies that we can add I mean it's it's pretty much you can get anything you want to here right so um, anyway that to me makes the most sense um, especially in this market this market's been tough it's a tough market uh, with you know a lot of back and forth action here uh, let's see um, SP, uh, when you sell vertical spreads, was a good profit target. Yeah, yeah, 40, 50% is pretty, pretty typical, you know. And I would say this too, so like iron condors, for example, um, you know, 50%, that's the easy money, that's the low-hanging fruit, you know, sell it, get out. Lately, I've actually been taking less than that. So if you do a vertical, um, depending on how fast you make the money, we sold one yesterday. I sold a call credit spread yesterday and we got a flush down uh, and it was on the SPX and we got a flush down today of course and we took it was a $250 profit but you know we put it on yesterday and took it off today 250 bucks you know high five um, there's a lot more in that trade we could have held it but I was looking at it thinking you know again we go down smaller time frames uh, I'll say 20 day we're going to hit a spot down even in a downtrending market you you do have um, bursts of short covering or whatever you know to the upside and when that happens I will I'll most likely I'll, I'll sell another call credit spread up here and, and write it back down uh, so yes yet yeah, to, to answer your question yes 40 50 percent is a good is a good number now if if we weren't I'll say this so if we weren't already so sold off here on the market for example, if I had sold that here at that 34, um, I would ride it down probably to at least that Darvis box, which maybe that's 70% or something like that. But it, again, you got to look at the charts and make a decision. In general, especially in this market, I would say to take the low hanging fruit and easy money is easy, it is the best thing to do, most prudent thing to do. Um, and, you know, and then go look for another setup, even the same setup. We have been able to get in and out of trades you know the same trade or or a similar trade you know over and over and that that's nice when you can do that all right uh chickadee do i have preferred time frame on spx trades yes i do i mean so in general on spx trades and i would say over the long term now i've been trading for 34 years professionally for 34 years um for a living and I would say kind of my go-to time frames are, are 30, 45 days out. And I'm doing butterflies. I'm doing iron condors, things like that, credit spreads. Um, then on the shorter time frames, I'm doing weekly stuff like calendars, diagonals. Um, and those are typically same week or next week. So I'm seven days, you know, or actually five days, you know, 
that you know the Monday to Friday first week or the following Friday or the next. So I'm one, two, three weeks out on the shorter term weekly stuff. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, and that's why I, I like this this Darvis box setup is on a 34 EMA and it just works really well for the time frames that I like to look at. Uh, Bob, yep, yeah, sure, absolutely. So on the so on 34 he, here, and you got, again, you guys may have this. Again, this is a free indicator. Um, basically, to to keep it simple, this is a an upper 34 EMA average, and that's a lower 34 EMA average. So generally speaking, you see right here, when we break above this 34 going this way, your target is here generally speaking now you would want to back that up with some voodoo lines and some and some uh, fib levels so if I had a voodoo um, fire line there I would say we might pause here before you know and pull back a little bit before coming up there if I had fib levels that said oh, I got a lot of resistance above us we may pull back here and then come up you know I'm looking at that on, on time frames but again generally above 34 um, on a little bit longer time frame like I'm talking about you know you buy the dip when you break below right here caution danger will Robinson flags you know are coming up you break below and then you're gonna short down to this level right and again I am looking at this even now in short-term time frames um, because this so from basically from here to here was that's pretty easy trading by the dip 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 here more of a question mark which way we're going to go well we're going to come down here that held twice and bounced up here here I thought we were going to come back up we did not we failed came down to the lower 34 it held we got above it again I think we're going up here we did not we came back down here this has held we are kind of poking below it which is again that's a sign of weakness honestly to go this way so I hope that makes sense. Again, this is free, um, and, I, and I'm probably not doing it justice. I'm giving you the real short answer to, on how to use this. Um, again, Raggy put that together, and it's it's I've used it for a long time. All right. Um, Uh, chickadee, the D time frame. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm following you on that. Um, let me know if if uh, I'm. I'm not sure. I'm following you on that. Uh, the question. Um, so again, um, I need to wrap it up here. We're almost out of time. But um, on my, you know, I will keep these up on the chart most of the time. You know, and again, this. So I'm looking at this. This is ES right now. Um, this was the low in the morning. We just took that out. We're falling here, um, and I'm watching this. This is good information to know. Again, if I'm ready to set up a trade based on this, and this is the ES, and maybe we set up a trade, you know, in the ES or in the SPX. But I'm going to look at different time frames. I'm going to look at you know lots of fib levels, that kind of thing. And I'll show you a fib level real quick. Then I got to wind it up. Uh, if let me get a current one here, I'll go to a 10 minute chart. So here's, here's how I use it. So I'll take this. I just did a screenshot here. So this is a 10 minute chart on the ES, right? This shows me that we have a, we've got an air gap. We got a pocket down here to 4314. We're at 4317 right now. Uh, this is a 618, 4314 then 4313 those levels should hold and we should pro we should probably bounce now we may bounce and come and fail that's a 10 minute chart so a lot can happen in you know 20 minutes uh, but that's kind of my first stop and, and it'll be interesting to see you guys keep an eye on 4314 again that's ES not SPX um, and see if that holds um, and that's that's how I'm looking at on smart time frames and again if I'm ready to set up a trade, I'm looking at those really small time frames. Um, 
I'm also looking at the trade tab that shows our days to expiration. How far out do we want to go? You know, if it's SPX, we go any day of the week or we go to Friday or next Friday or the Friday after or or to October or whatever we're going to trade, you know. So anyway, I hope that hope that makes sense. Yes, yes, chickadee, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, daily, daily on the year. Yes. Mm hmm Yes. Um let's see, Corey, real quick, and then I gotta wind it up here. Uh on Amazon. I you know, I, I like trading Amazon a lot, actually. Uh I'm gonna switch this over to here for two reasons. I like this, obviously I like to set up a lot. And I'm looking at the volatility here. So that what this tells you, you see our volatility is already on the rise. If we look at our average volatility for the prior earnings dates, it's going to be somewhere around here, which is, let's see, somewhere around, I don't know, it's, I'm guessing. I, I do have an exact number, but I'll, so it's at 48, we're at 37. So that vol has already risen. Um, a pretty good bit, but it's going to rise more, right? Um, if I'm bullish, I would put, I would do a bullish trade, and I, and I think I would be honestly back up to that lower 34 EMA. I would use a tight stop under it here. So if I'm wrong and we break below that prior Darvis box, I'd pull the plug on it. I stop myself out. Um, earnings, you see that question mark? This means it's not confirmed yet. Uh, but it's showing around the first of of uh, November, or excuse me, second of November. Um, but right now, it's a little iffy to go in. I will keep an eye on this and remind me in the main room, or if you're in the bias room, you know, and, I, and we'll continue to look at this. Right now, I'm kind of sitting on my hands on something like that. Uh, it's not close enough. We're more than a month away from earnings. Uh, but if we can find a foothold down here and try to get a run up. Uh, into earnings, that would be the way that I would play this off the top of my head. Uh, SP, yes, yes, that was, that was, so Tammy is my wife. She is the Fibonacci princess and she runs all the charts for me. Um, that is exactly where I get that from. So, and I don't, so that frees me up. I don't sit there and run all those charts all day long because on small time frames you're resetting those charts constantly, right? Um, so yes, good, good eye. That was her chart. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let me wind it up here. I've actually went over time, but I think it's worth talking about. Um, try to keep it as simple as you can, but also think about your own time frame. If you're doing, you know, faster trading and you're looking at tick charts and things like that, um, maybe these are, you know, these time frames might be a little bit too long for you. These, you know, again, start big picture and work your way down into um, into whatever time frame you're trading, right? All right, guys. Well, uh, let me know. Yep, yeah, absolutely, Corey. Let me know if I can help you guys. I'm in the main room three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'm in the bias room every day. Uh, so come join me in there if you can. And um, this will be recorded if you want to go back, if you came in late or something. And hope this helps. So thanks for the time, guys. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you soon. Take care.